Hi friends, Pam Shepard with Pamela Shep Productions here. And today I wanna to tell you about a quilt that I just made. And I, um, I went to a quilt show here in our local area in Roseburg. And while I was there, they had this table and they were giving away all these different ma magazines and, and books and um, all these different things that had quilt uh, patterns and ideas and everything in it. And so I found one of the one of the books I found was called uh, "The Simple Joys of Quilting," and it's it's this book right here. And so I brought it home, and when I opened it up, there was a quilt in here. Um, that I just loved. I thought that was just a way cool quilt. And it was by Mary Hickey. So I thought I'd like to make that quilt and I'd like to make a video about it. <clears throat> so I proceeded to look up Mary Hickey and I was going to ask permission to use her, uh, you know, pattern and, and make this uh, tutorial. Well, as the more I searched, the more I realized that she had passed away with cancer. And it upset me so much. I just, it really upset me. So I started researching all about her and where she was from. And she actually ended up having like a, uh, I don't know what you would call it, where they actually uh, produced the books, a printing company. And so I tried to get a hold of any and all of them. I couldn't get a hold of anybody. I tried to find her husband and her, her children. And so I was so intrigued by her and her life. I started reading about her. And so I ended up looking online and finding that she had several different books. So I went, uh, uh, I started, you could get the, they're most at thrift stores or thrift bookstores. And I'll turn the camera down a little bit. And so the these books, um, you could order them from everywhere. So I got online and I started looking up every book that she was in and had patterns on. And so I started, or most of them were $2.50 or $2.75. Or I think for every book that I could find of hers, I think I spent $29 and had them sent here. I was just very intrigued by her. So I am very proud to show you a quilt that I made um, of hers. I'm planning to make some more. The one I made was called Cottage Garden. I did make a mistake and I used different colors and I and this video is going to be a little bit long so you can fast forward it to the parts you want to see but I started at the beginning and you can um, like I said look up all of her books and uh, order them all kinds of places for almost nothing and I was just intrigued by her and and her abilities and her talents and so this this is dedicated to a woman I never met but I feel like very kindred spirits with her and her name is Mary Hickey. And so I'm going to show you some of the books that I got of hers. And then I have the video of me making the quilt and uh, you can fast forward it if you don't want to see all the parts, but this I think is a pretty cool uh, video. So I'm going to show you the books now. Okay. Okay. Of, of course, this is the first one I had, which was called uh, the simple joys of quilting. Uh, I ended up, not realizing that's the one I had and I ordered an extra one. So um, I may have a little deal that we can do a drawing if somebody would like to to get this book and and um, I'll send it to you. One of the, Another one of hers that I got was called, um, you know, the cottage style quilts. Now, other people like this one I thought was kind of a cool one. It was called the Big Red Checkerboard Star. And it was uh, by Mary Hickey, and it was quilted by Don Kelly. Some of them were quilted by someone else. You know, just a thumb through. There's just some really cool, you know, quilts in here with the patterns. I was just, I was just intrigued by, um, by her talents and abilities. Then there was this one called um, the Big Book of Small Quilts. And um, this was one that I thought was pretty cute, Elizabethan Star. And um, yeah, it's just a 
it's just fun quilts in here. And you can order these online for almost nothing. Uh, you can get them at thrift stores. That's where I got. I think you can even go to Amazon and order them. Um, here's the same one like I was making. Um, you can even order them on Amazon from used bookstores. Uh, this one was called Angle Antics by Mary Hickey. Talented lady, see what I mean? This one, you know, has seen its better days, but it still has all kinds of different quilts and designs, and she teaches you how to do bias. Look at all these stars. I love this one. I love this where you have all the different stars. I think that's just so cool. And just just a, an amazing an amazing book. All of them are. Like I said, this one kind of falling apart a bit, but yeah. Just giving you a thumb through. So fun. And this one was called uh, Little by Little, and it's Quilts in Miniature by Mary Hickey, once again, of course. And um, these are little miniature quilts. So cute, huh? Look at that. They're adorable. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Yeah. Then this one was called Sweet and Simple Baby Quilts. Oh, this is the wonderful block design. Look at this. So nice. Yeah, by Mary Hickey. Very talented woman. So sad to lose her. And she died of cancer. And this is the uh, Pioneer Storybook Quilts by Mary Hickey. Isn't that cool? And I think it kind of has like stories in here. Yeah. I just love these. It gives you applique templates. Basket. Just amazing, huh? And then the first one, I guess, was the joy of quilting. The first one uh, before the simple joy of quilting, I think. Or I don't know which one was first. But anyhow, it has numerous patterns and ideas. Once again, this is very, this is called Over and Under, Around and Through. Very, very similar to the one that I did. And yeah, look at this. Bouquets. Very talented. Lots of patterns. Lots of instruction. Just a cool, cool lady. Wish I could have met her. I really do. And I love this one. I think I'm going to make this one. I don't know which colors yet, but um, here's the garden trellis again in different colors. Mine is in, in uh, blacks and creams and different colors also. But isn't this cool? Such a talented woman. But I just wanted you to know that um, I was so intrigued with her, and I'm going to be making um, some Mary Hickey quilts and just dedicate these to her and her family that I don't even know. Okay? All right, so let's get started, and I'll show you what I did. Actually, I did light and dark, and I need to cut uh, one strip that's... It's, three and three eighths by 42. And that's one of the light and one of the dark. Okay, so we're gonna start with the first one and we wanna make this three and three eighths by 42. Okay, and so what they want us to do with this strip of the light is to cut it in three and three eighths inch squares. Then we're going to do 12 of 3 and 3 eighths squares all the way across. And I'm going to do this, put it on the 3 eighths and then a straight line down here 
so that um, my square's straight. There's one, two, because I'm doing two at a time. Eleven, twelve. So I have twelve of those ready now. And I'm supposed to do the same thing with the other color. And the other light one we're supposed to do is uh, two strips of 12 by 42. Okay. And we need two of those. Okay, that's two 12s for the light. Okay, three and three eighths. So there's 12. The next step, cut two and a half strips on the bias on this 12 inch. So for those of you that don't know what the bias is, it's a 45 degree angle. So on this, on almost any um, ruler, this one has a 45 degree angle right here. You can get it on many different ones, but the 45 degree angle needs to go along the bottom part, like that. And so then this, because it's on the, this is the 45 degree, so that is on the bias. Now I have both of these pieces put together. It said put one on top of the other, right sides together. And I'm going to have this 45 degree right here like this, but we're going to take it where it goes right to the corner. And we'll make the first cut. Then after, thereafter that, we're supposed to make two and a half inch, two and a half inch cuts. And we're supposed to do eight of them. And this exact same way is the way you can make bias tape going around a corner or something. So, yeah. So we're going to put these together. And we're going to do four more of those exact same cuts that we did. Okay, then you'll want to sew the long strips front sides together with one, lar one dark and one light piece. And you'll do all of those long pieces, and then we'll do the next step. Okay, you'll want to press the seams open, and be careful not to stretch it, because remember, we cut those on a bias, so they will be a little bit stretchy. I do use my clapper on those seams because it really seems to make a nice pressing. Here I'm using my Riley Blake square rulers and I'm squaring up the edges um, so that we have a nice clean square edge. You'll want to do that with all six sets of the double colors, both, both sets of colors. From the point, you'll want to measure down 12 and 3 quarters inches and make another point at the other end with your little square ruler. You will do that with all the sets and leave your last six remaining because we'll do something else with those. This is where a, a pattern will come in really handy. Okay, so we're going to fold this in half this way, the six remaining of all of these. Put them in the middle. Okay, then we want to cut this um, four and five eighths. So it's just the line uh, just after a half, four and a half. So there's a little line right there. You can push this up so that you can line the bottom and go the line just past four and a half, the little line right there. 
and so then we have four and five eighths and while we've got it there we want to go to the very end then we want to square it off exactly so we're going to go down the center line again like we did before We'll continue to do that with all the rest of these, both colors, and I'll be back. Okay, so the next step that we needed to take were, uh, was to sew these little triangle pieces that we cut initially and have them go straight across the bottom and then sew them up the side and um, I actually ironed them out and honestly I did have to kind of trim them a little bit back with my little um, with my little square ruler you know and you have to be really careful with these because they're on bias. They're cut on the bias, so they can stretch real easy. You've got to be real careful. Real careful not to stretch them. Let me back it out just a little bit. Yeah, okay. And so um, we got these triangles sewn on and ironed. And then, like it shows on, on these, how we're making... Uh, X blocks and Y blocks. The X blocks uh, are with the green in the center, but remember my yellow is the is the center. And then the Y blocks is my peach is this color. So it shows the dark and the light this way. And then it shows the dark and the like this way and then you're supposed to mimic it on the other side the dark and the light you pull it where you can see all of it at once and so what I do is I fold this in the middle and I do a little crease there and a little crease there so that um, Got the dark on the bottom. Then I take this line here, put it right in the middle where my crease is. And this is one place I like to use these like hair clips, if you will, because it's so nice and flat. And you know, I just do it like this and I line this up really nice. And so then when I'm over there sewing it on the machine, I can just pull these clips off real easy. Then we'll turn this around. And we're going to put some strings where the very center, we're going to put it on the crease that I made. And I folded it exactly in half. And I'm making a fourth of an inch seam all the way down both sides. And after I do that, this is what we have. I have not I have not pressed this yet. And this this one, get all the strings everywhere. Um, have not pressed this one yet either. So then they're going to end up looking like they're going under and over and overlapping like this. Very beautiful. Okay, so let me get some of these sewn up and I'll be back. Okay, so I'm laying it out and the dark on the gold is on the top, 
the dark on this is on the bottom so that it gives the feeling that's going under now we put the little squares on there to help it have that feeling a little bit more so one square would be sewn here you know where you would actually just So a half a square there. So you see, we keep the line going. So then you'd need a uh, light square there, a dark square there, a light peach square there. So that's what I'm going to do now is lay out all the little squares, and I'm going to I'm going to uh, pin them to the correct corners so I know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, now I've laid out the corners on each one. The gold where the gold was, the burgundy, the gold where the gold, and the peachy cream where the peachy cream was. And then we'll sew those on, we'll, we'll iron them across, and uh, well, across this way, and we'll sew them on and cut the corners in. As you can see, it will join right in, okay? So I laid them all out so that I know where they all go. They don't look right right now, but they are. <laughs> Okay, let me sew on some corners and I'll show you. Okay, so in doing the squares, um, I saw that each square was supposed to finish at eight and a half inches. So I squared every square up at eight and a half inches. But in doing so, what I didn't realize was, as I was squaring them up, they all matched perfectly. But if I took a quarter of an inch seam on them, then they no longer matched up. So let's just, well, let me pin it and show you. If I took this and lined it up, and it's lined up perfectly, ouch, and I grab a couple of pins and I pin like a quarter of an inch seam. Then when you flip it over, it totally distorts the design. So it no longer looks like it's, oh, which I think I have it turned backwards anyhow. But uh, as you can see, they don't line up no matter what you do. So when you make, when you make a boo-boo and you mess it up like that, well, let me turn this one the way it's supposed to be, like this. But irregardless, it doesn't line up. It lines up perfectly now. So what I ended up doing was I cut some background pieces. These are eight and a half. They're all, they're all uh, squared up at eight and a half. So I cut some backgrounds, because I'm going to do this quilt as you go. I cut those 10 inches. And I put the batting the exact same size as this eight and a half inch. So I put it in the center of the 10 inch square. And then um, I will show you how I, what I actually do to quilt it. I make, you know, I stitch in the ditch there, 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 and there. And then here I do lines, one inch lines across this way and one inch lines across that way on this particular one. Uh, this particular one, I stitch in the ditch here, here, and here, 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 and here. So that's the quilting that I'm doing on these. But what I realized is I have no spare room on either side. So what I had to do uh, let me grab another piece and I'll show you. Some of the backing I'm doing this fabric. Some of it I'm doing the black. Uh, some of it I'm doing burgundy. I'm doing the burgundy. So what I had to do was take this one. I'm going to put my batting in there also in the center. There we go. Oh, 
Okay. Then I put this on top. Oops. And I do my quilting, you know, like I said, in the ditch. Then when it's time, I sew them together. I take these two pieces back to back and I line them up. Actually, what I really do is I tuck this, I'll show you. I tuck this down inside and I tuck this down inside and this one also, just so that I can see if I'm getting it exactly lined up. Right there, right there, and I put it in a pin considerably further down so that I can flip those sides back up. Then I sew as closely as I can right along here. And then when I turn them back out and I've sewn them together, See, I've sewn these together. Then I, um, I just fold it over out of the way. And I've made myself strips. I cut them one and a half inches, fold them in, and then I stitch um, these in between. And I still think I'm gonna, I still think it really keeps the feeling that it's going under and I don't lose that. So that's what I've had to do to correct it. And I also put it on the back, so I'll show you on this one. I did this one already. Let me move this out of the way. I did this one already. As you can see, I quilted the top. I sewed the sides together. I actually ended up putting one of these strips on the back as well, just because I thought it looked considerably neater. See, and I quilted this back, and I've quilted this, just the pieces in the ditch, this, this one in the ditch, and I think it really keeps the feeling that it's going, going to go up and over, up and over. So that's what I had to do to correct it. So I'll keep going and show you what I've done. What I do to start out with is I stitch in the ditch here, 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 and here, so that it holds it in the center as best as it can. So I have my stitch in the ditch um, foot on here, and so I run it, run the um, little metal piece right exactly where the the seam is. Then I'm going to do the opposite side. Then I'll do one of these sides. opposite side. Oops, my needle came unthreaded. And on this one. Okay, then what I really like to do, and I've shown this before many times, um, you can use your walking foot, but this works just fine for me. So I have on this particular deal, it has four lines. I line up what I want to, like this line here, I'm going to line it up there and I'm gonna stitch, put my, put my uh, foot down right against it. And that's what I'm gonna use to follow.
Okay. See? And then I'm going to take this line, put it on there again, along this side. Now, when I get up to here, I don't want the lines going across there. So I put this here and I get it lined up beside here. And then I put my needle down on that line that I did across here. And I'll, I do, uh, I make the little knot thing. I do it a couple of times so that it makes a nice knot there so it keeps it. When I get down to this one, I do the same. I come right to the edge, and then I have, make the needle go up and down and make a knot. Okay, just a minute, Bella. Okay, and then cut it. Yeah. So then you can see on this side, it made a knot right there, and I'll cut the strings off. So that's what I do, and I will continue to do that for this whole thing, then I'll turn it around. And I'll do the exact same thing from this direction and it'll make the squares. Then on the back, you know, I've got to clean all these little edges up over here as well. Now, when I do sew it along the edge, you can see that it'll, it'll be just fine. Okay. So I do right down the center, first of all, to hold it in place. Okay. And then I go on this side here. side here then I'll come up and do this one right there and I have the needle go up and down to make the knot the same here right there and then the same right here So I'll trim these up and then I'll show you what I do next. Okay, so what I've been doing is I take these two pieces on this one and I just fold them over like that. And I use my, I use my um, Roxanne glue. So I'm going to um, fold it over like this and fold it over like that and fold it over like that. Then I'm going to press it to keep it out of the way. So let me press it and I'll bring it right back. Okay, so I've got it pressed down. Now on this back side, I did not like the way it looked. So especially when I put the burgundy 
up against it. It just, something didn't seem right about it. So I've gone to the trouble, which you don't have to, and I don't know if I would do it again, but uh, I'm gonna put this, I cut it one and a half inches wide. So it's three quarters of an inch now. And I'm gonna put this right in the middle and I'm gonna leave it down just a little bit because I'm gonna need to do this end as well. So I'm gonna get it out of the way a little bit. And I'm gonna put it right down the middle. And uh, you can also use your, oops, touch my light. You can also use your glue on this section to hold it down good as well. That one's about empty, so I'm using the big fat end. Okay, so, um, and you wanna get this in the center, this crease in the center. So uh, going ahead using the um, stitch in the ditch, I'm just gonna leave it on. I've been leaving it on for most all of it, but what I am gonna do is click and move my needle over to the far left hand side so that when I run it right along the edge here like this it gives me about an eighth of an inch seam so and it's so nice and straight okay now I am going to cut this off about right here because I'm gonna you know need to go from the other direction as well okay. so see it's just a nice little um, just a nice seam just just over the edge and I like to do it on the back first. I had decided to use black thread on that oh well then when I put it on the front um, you know that I could cover up the stitching but I am gonna move I think I am gonna when I use this part I'm gonna use black thread so let me change and I'll be back okay so I've put glue on the front I'm going to put this across the center. Oops, got some glue on there. I'm going to, let me run an iron on it real quick. I got a little glue on there, but it'll come right off. Okay, so then I'm, I put black thread in here. Oh. And right along. Okay. Actually. that glue off but anyhow so yeah it's stitched along there so nicely and then we'll do the same thing with this side you know going this direction <clears throat> and I am gonna use black thread won't show up on this okay so that's how I did those two pieces and then I'll go side to side to side to side all the way and then I'll do a big long one that goes down uh, this complete, uh, uh, this complete long edge, then I'll match everything up.
that's how I do it. And it's quilted as you go, so it's done. I mean, it's ready to to bind and everything. As soon as we get this on there, it's a done quilt. So that's kind of cool. Okay, I'll be back. And here, here's the front. As you can see, I have the, uh, the binding just pinned. Please make sure and order one of these books. You will love it, and it has so many patterns that it's, and they're very, very inexpensive at the thrift um, bookstores, and you can just look online, just Google it, and you'll find it. Haven't pressed it or anything yet, so, yeah. And here's the back of the quilt. I have the, um, the binding just pinned. I don't have it sewn yet. Um, it ended up being about 43 by 43. You can see I have uh, five squares across and I believe five squares up and down as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. I have loved doing this. And don't forget, subscribe and like, and we'll see you on the very next video. Okay, bye-bye.